All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Ministry Revealed, October 24th, 2017. Hope you're having a good Tuesday. This is now the video that I was mentioning a few days ago, and then I didn't end up doing yesterday, which I'm glad I didn't end up doing. Uh, there's a story with one of the subscribers, and man, oh man, it's incredible how the Lord works. All glory to God. It's so, so incredible. Um, maybe I'll tell the story another time. Maybe not. We'll see. But it was just so unbelievable, <clears throat> excuse me, that I, I, it doesn't matter to me if anybody watches that uh, last video that was just kind of an impromptu one uh, <laughs> when you understand or if you understood what happened from it, it, it was just incredible. So with that, today was the one I was telling you about where I was, I ended up in Romans 16, which is the last chapter of Romans. I ended up in 1 Corinthians uh, 16, which is the last chapter. And 2 Corinthians 13, which is the last chapter. And, excuse me, how it all, uh, you know, as usual, how it came to be, I, I can't explain it. But it just led me and led me. Again, it all goes back to the Spirit. And it ties in with something that I wanted to do as well because I wanted to eventually, you know, we don't have much time left, but I I want to get to a video uh, and I could probably do them individually where I could break down a little bit more for you guys where I explain uh, just like I do in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Luke is to pre-tribulation group. Mark is to the church during their seven-year tribulation. Matthew is to the Jews during that seven-year tribulation, Jacob's trouble. And I, I talk about it all the time. I've given you guys all the evidence, okay? Well, Corinthians is talking to the tribulation church. First Corinthians is. Second Corinthians is speaking to the second part of tribulation, the seven years for the Jews. And so it's the same with First Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians, First Timothy, Second Timothy, First Peter, and Second Peter. I've spoken about this before. I've touched on it, but I think I'm going to need to go into it a little bit more. And today we'll touch more on that in First uh, and Second Corinthians. And I've done a lot of uh, the differences here in First and Second Thessalonians. The reason these things are important is once the escape has taken place that Luke talks about, right? There's an escape that there's a group that's going to escape. And my subscribers that follow me, they know what I'm talking about. There's an escape that happens. Now, the, the church has been teaching for years and years, for generations, that there's going to be a rapture that's going to take place first before the tribulation begins. And in a sense, they're correct. There's a tribulation, there's a, there's a rapture that's going to take place before the, the seven years of Jacob's trouble. That's true. They're absolutely right. However, what they weren't aware of, neither was I until early September when the Spirit started working through me, that there's a seven years of tribulation that's coming prior to the tribulation of for the Jews of Jacob's trouble. There's a total of 14 years and we know this from 2 Corinthians 12, where Paul is talking, having come a third time, which is something, oh, we won't touch in because it's 12 today, um, not 13. So he's talking here to the Jews, having come a third time, saying he's not bringing them any burdens this time. He's not coming for their kids. Why? Because the first time he came, he took a group like being raptured. It wasn't raptured, okay? And the second time he came, this group, he, there was a rapture. This, why it's not a rapture, it's like a rapture, because this group is taken in the spirit first. It's the same as, uh, you know, I don't want to get too far down this rabbit trail. Um, I talk about it in, in a lot of my other videos. But even John in Revelation, what happens, John says, I was suddenly taken in the spirit. And where was he? Before the throne, right? When the door was open. He was taken in the spirit and he was before the throne. Well, this is like being caught up. Why? I explain in other videos because the body doesn't go here. The body, nobody gets their spiritual body until the rapture, the complete rapture of the church happens here. So this one here is the spirit. And you can discern that 
through this understanding here and the understanding here that's spoken about. And they end up, this group here ends up in the third heaven. Well, the third heaven is where the throne is, where the angels are, where the Lord is. They end up in the third heaven, okay? Now, if we go into Luke, and Luke says, you know, there's a group that gets to escape all these things, right? All these things that shall come to pass. Everybody's going to see of wars and rumors of wars and commotions, but only Luke's group does it end here, meaning... This group that Luke's talking about, the pre-tribulation church group, right? Church, when I say church, remember, it's the tribes of Israel, right? The ten tribes, the northern tribes that have gone all throughout the land. It's Gentiles, it's it's Jew, uh, sorry, it's uh, Israelites, right? It's, it's everybody in there grafted into one, okay? This group here, and within them, there's Jews within them as well, right? So, because there's going to be from all 12 tribes. It's from every tongue, nation, tribe, everything, all right, that have accepted Christ before the tribulation of anything begins. So right here is where this group escapes. And we know that by the words spoken here before this begins. Matthew and Mark don't have these words prior to. And then it, it happens again, right? It'll say it again, see? And he spoke to them a parable, right? This is Luke saying Jesus was telling Matthew's group and Mark's group. But then as we go down further, we see here, take heed to yourself. So none of this stuff is in Matthew and Mark's discourse, right? Take heed to yourself. Watch and pray always. You know, don't be caught up in the things of this world. Don't be caught up in drunkenness and all these things in this world. Because what's coming is going to be as a snare. It's going to catch the whole world off guard. But there's a group of you that watching, that are watching and praying always, to be accounted worthy to escape all these things which shall come to pass and to stand, see this? And to stand before the Son of Man. Well, where are you going to stand before the Son of Man? Just like Paul said in 2 Corinthians. Right? There's a group that's going to escape in the Spirit and stand before the Son of Man in the third heaven before the throne. Right? So that's this. There, there's a group there that gets to escape first. And then... Seven years later, approximately, we have the church rapture. That's when everybody, the dead in Christ, will receive their new spiritual bodies first. Then those who are alive will be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. And why is this important to understand? Again, going first, second, and first, second, which we're going to touch on today. It's important because, could you imagine what people are going to think when so much of the church, you know, there's over 2 billion people that claim to be Christians right now could you imagine when 144 million only suddenly disappear right suddenly drop no sorry not just disappear but drop dead how are they going to explain that well first of all war is going to happen at the same time that that takes place um so they'll be able to explain some of that but it's going to be all over the world whereas the war is not instantly going to be all over the world so you have to understand that all of these christians i mean there's going to be pastors left not obviously not everybody but there's going to be pastors left. There's going to be people who consider themselves believers and are believers. They just weren't fully prepared. They weren't accounted worthy. They weren't doing what the things that they were supposed to. <clears throat> so the you can imagine when they now go to their pastors and they go to their teachers, well, why are you here? Why is most of our church still here if it was a rapture? If it was a rapture, why weren't we changed? Why weren't they changed? Why didn't they disappear? Why did all these people drop dead? So do you understand the importance of this information? It's people are going to get so confused because they've been taught all their lives now for generations. People have been taught that it's going to be a rapture that takes place first. It's not. There's going to be an escape that takes place first. Church is going to have tribulation, then the rapture, then Jacob's trouble. All right. It's so, so important. I know people who follow me, they, they've understood that now. This is for those who might be new listening as well. Okay? And I'm going to even give you the evidence of this now. It's going to even explain the 144,000. See, in the past, I thought that the 144,000 came from the 144 million in the escape. But as I started digging deeper into it, my understanding became even more clear. There is the 144,000. 
there is the 144 million, but they are two separate groups. I thought that, you know, the they would take the 144,000 from the 144 million. But as you study more and you get deeper into it, right, the Lord just will continue to reveal. I threw in my understanding on it. And then as I kept digging, the Lord kept revealing more to me. And you're going to see that they can't come from the 144 million of the escaped group because they're not going to die in, this, uh, in the beginning, right? There's a group that is going to show up on Mount Zion, right, with the Lamb. And in Mark 9, it even talks about it. And I don't want to touch too much on it. I'm going to save that because I'm now studying into uh, the two witnesses. And I absolutely believe that the 144,000 tie into that. Um, I don't have all the details yet, but there's, there's a lot more to it. So let's get into this today. So let's go into Romans 16 and watch this. In Romans 16, they said to greet these people, okay? Well, there's 16 greetings, salutations, greetings, okay? So it's greet this group, right? Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ. There's another one here. It explains some of them, others it doesn't. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Salute my well-beloved. It's the only one he calls well-beloved. Uh, Ephentus, Ephenitus. Uh, this is the first fruits of Eshia unto Christ. All right, this is through, it's, it was translated and it was from like Asia. All right, this is not Asia as we know it today. This is over in Europe. Uh, in um, there was two parts uh, in Greece, all right, and this was one of them. And then you'll see in another one, there's another group. So these are the first fruits to Christ. So wait a second, the first fruits that can only mean one thing. This is the first fruits. This is this is the group that escapes. And to understand first fruits, you have to understand how the Jews harvest. Right? You need to understand their harvest seasons, their harvest cycles. Right? Just like in the overall, I spoke about this in a video before, where Jesus in the overall, in a big high up picture, Jesus Christ was the first fruits. The church is going to be the main harvest. And then the Jews are the corners and the gleaning. Right? They remain for the, for, they're, they're going to stay. But there's the first fruits taken, the main harvest, and then the corners and gleaning. Okay? Those are the three images. Well, within that, each one has that scenario as well because there's three harvests. Jesus already did the first harvest. Well, what about the next one, right? The wheat harvest. There's a first fruits that are Christ's. They're Jesus's. And we're going to find out even later, it's going to say <laughs> where they are and who's, like, they're the ones doing the greeting. It's incredible. And this is in Romans First, uh, Romans 16, 1 Corinthians 16, 2 Corinthians 13, it breaks down the three groups just like Matthew, Mark, and Luke, okay? So in here, in Romans 16, everybody's here, and it's all 12 tribes. You can see there's greet, there's greet, there's greet again, there's salute, there's greet, salute, and what it is is it's telling you all these 12 tribes, the 12 tribes of the ones that have even been scattered where they are or who they are, right? These groups, if you can find out where these groups live, you find out where those 10 tribes were scattered to. And then what else do we have here? There's two groups, uh, interesting enough, right? Now, why would there be two groups that are called kinsmen, right? This is Paul talking. There's two groups that are called his kinsmen. Here's one. Right, so here's one. And so out of 12 groups that are saluted and greeted, two of them are his kinsmen. Why? Because those are uh, from Judah. Those are the ones in the land. Then you have the other 10 that are scattered throughout the northern tribes and into Europe, right? The 10 that are scattered in throughout the north and then they go out into Europe, into Syria, and the, into Greece and into Rome. It tells you them all. And you could do a study. I, I haven't done this study, but I'm guaranteeing you, you can do a study on all these different groups that are saluted and greeted 
and find out which area they come from, right? And these names, who they tie to. See, from the household and see who they tie to. But today, I'm not talking about that. I don't know if I'll do it in another video, but you guys can go in and check that out and do a detailed study to find out where these people were and where, where they were from and how they tied in. And, you know, then they spread out to the world from there, right? And so now let's look here. So we have from this group, Priscilla and Aquila, and it says, likewise, greet the church, right? Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Salute my well beloved Ephesus, who is the first fruits. So you have the first, not just first fruits, but unto Christ, right? The first fruits of Etia unto Christ. This is really, really important. And you got to remember, this is, this is the end of Romans before Corinthians. And I told you, if 1 Corinthians is to the church during tribulation and 2 Corinthians is to the Jews during tribulation, then is there something, which is what caused me to, I guess, go into this, but into 16, I don't know how I got there. Except now we have this, and it's before the church. It's before the Jews' portions. So it's almost like, okay, I was digging, and I end up here in Romans 16, and you could see it right away who's being spoken to, right? That's, that's the key. So it's a greeting to all of them, a greeting and a salutation from all 12 tribes, all right? And then you're going to find out that, there's first fruits unto Christ, which is the first fruits before the tribulation begins, just like I told you, right? There's a first fruits here before what? Before the tribulation begins, just like I've been saying, based on who is being spoken to in 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians, okay? So there's a first fruits that is addressed and removed first before the tribulation begins. Not a rapture, but the first fruits are taken out. And then look who's look who's um, at the towards the end of it. It says, "Salute one another with a holy kiss." You'll see that in all three. And this one here, check this out. This was so cool. The churches of Christ salute you. And you're going to see when when you when we see it in First Corinthians 16 and then in Second Corinthians 13, it changes who is being saluted, right? It's, it, it tells you so, so much. So here, the, 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 the escaped group hasn't been removed yet. It's telling you that this group is the one that's about to be removed. Okay? And look who's doing the saluting because this is, this is talking to the church before it leaves, telling them that this group here is going to be the first fruits. Out of all the 12, these two breakdowns up here are the two that are going to be the portion of the escaped group. It's incredible. And it ties into, again, if we went into uh, Revelation 2 and 3, into the churches and who they're being addressed, you find out that these guys are the church that escapes, the, the church that is described here, those two first groups from Etia. Those are the people that are from the church of Philadelphia. It is so incredible how it ties all together. But now watch this. So one to another. Like I said, they're still here. He's telling us who those groups are that are going to be of the first fruits to Christ. And who's the one doing the greeting? The churches of Christ salute you. The churches of Christ? Yeah. The churches. Where are the churches? They're in heaven, right? The, the seven candlesticks, right? The, the angels, the seven churches, right? Well, watch this. The churches, the word churches means a calling out. So who's doing the calling out to these guys? The churches in heaven, the, the angels, right? The, that the Lord's holding the candlesticks. Those are the churches, right? And there's a calling out taking place to those who are to be escaped in the first fruits here. That's what he's doing. So he's telling us who the groups are. And he tells us who else is all here, all the 12 tribes, two of them are his kinsmen. And then he ends it with saying there's a calling out to those groups. Now watch, let's go into 1 Corinthians 16. Watch this. And isn't this interesting? 
I understand what it says. I understand how it's explained that, you know, when Paul comes, you know, don't be, uh, don't do a, a gathering. See there, that there should be no gathering when I come and that it, it's talking about them bringing in their harvests and there's going to be a group that's approved and take the harvest to Jerusalem. All right. I get that. However, the way the Lord shows me is not like that. This is the understanding for the times of the end, the scriptures that take it a deeper level into this understanding. Now, look at this, the collection for the saints. Seriously, I know what it's saying, what, the way you guys, we were all taught this understood, uh, was understood to mean. However, what's been revealed, like I said, is a deeper level of understanding for the end times during the end times. Because 1 Corinthians is written to the church during the tribulation. All right? And it's telling them, <laughs> look, the collection for the saints. It's literally going to be a collection of the saints towards the end. At the end of the tribulation of the church. All right? Now watch this. Uh, and whenever I come, whosoever you shall approve. What's being spoken of here through your letters and so forth? What's being said here is from your group. The, the saints, right? The believing church that's on earth during this time. When I come, whomsoever shall, shall you approve by your letters, by your prayers and supplications, whom you guys shall, shall approve, I'm going to bring with me if I'm allowed to come. See, if it be meet, if it be approved, that I shall go also, uh, sorry, that I go also, they shall go with me. All right? What's it talking about here? I know it sounds really confusing and it, it's going to get pretty tricky uh, in understanding. For me, it's I'm going to do my best here to get it across to you guys because it's, it's quite detailed. Um, but here, he's talking from all the saints, from this group of the saints, from all believers, which we know come from what? Every tongue, every tribe, every nation from all over the world, right? That's all the saints that are going to be here before the rapture. But before the rapture happens, what do we know? Well, we know from Revelation 14, right? Well, actually, we know in Revelation 7, right, that the 144,000 have to get sealed first, right? So you have all 144,000 get sealed first, and then what do we see? Then we see the rapture of every tongue, nation, tribe, kindred, everybody, all right? And then we go into 14, and what do we see? We see that John looks, and he sees the 144,000 with the lamb standing on Mount Zion, right? And the, 140, uh, the, the, the church is now gone, right? He hears them in heaven, doesn't see them because he's not looking at heaven yet. He's looking down on the earth, all right? So we know that they get sealed first, right? Then the rapture takes place. So now let's look at that. See, it's talking about the collection of the saints coming. I know it says for the saints, same thing. And this, when you understand this, it's then who is approved. There's the 144,000, 12,000 from each tribe. And what, what's going to happen? He says, now I will come unto you. Remember, this is Paul speaking. And Paul speaking almost as if he's like Christ. He's speaking like Christ here, which is why they were, it, the people would say like, they're, they were worshiping even him at some times, right? Because that's, that's who he's, he's speaking for, right? And so when I come and I pass through Macedonia, which is again in Europe, right? Where all the, the different, the tribes have gone through, the, the 10 tribes are scattered through. Um, and I will pass through. And it may be that I abide, yes, and winter with you that you may bring me on my journey wheresoever I go. Well, who's going to bring who on their journey? And this, this is going to tie in, and I'm not going to do it today because I need to study it more, but this ties in to the two witnesses. This is what's going on here. It ties in to the two witnesses. And it says they're going to go with them wherever he goes. Right? Well, let's go back into Revelation 14. Watch this. In Revelation 14, what does it say? Here's, these are the 144,000. Um, these are they which were redeemed from the earth. They were redeemed from among men. 
being the first fruits. And I'm going to show you how these guys are now the first fruits. And see, these are the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. Okay? Now watch this. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb wheresoever he goes. They were redeemed from among men, and they were the first fruits. Let's go back into 1 Corinthians. See, they were, from, they were redeemed from among men. They were believers, right? They're believers. They're, they're believers that have the law we know. They, have, they understand the law. They understand the Torah. They understand how they're supposed to, to teach this stuff, right? The entire gospel. And we find out that during this time of the, of the saints, during the time of tribulation, these guys got stronger and stronger, and they were the ones teaching, doing a lot of the teaching throughout the earth uh, to the church, giving them the understanding of things they're going to have to know, like keeping the Sabbath, like when to fast, you know, that you shouldn't be marrying anymore um, if you're not already married, that you abstain from having sex, even if you're married, that he doesn't want any children during this time of tribulation to come about for the church. All right? These are the guys, they're going to be teaching some of the rules, some of the laws. That's what's going to happen here. All right? And what does it say? Like I just read here. And what's going to happen? These are they who are going to take him on his journey wheresoever he goes. That's what we just read in Revelation 14. Right? So... And then it says, uh, then he's going to tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost. I haven't looked into enough about this, but I would say when the rapture is going to begin, prepare, because when these 144,000 get sealed, this is when he comes, right? This is talking the lamb. I don't know if it's the lamb here. If This, again, has to do mostly with the uh, two witnesses and how the 144,000 uh, are related to them. But it says that there's going to be Terry at Ephesus until Pentecost. So I would say what we'd be looking for is there's probably a six-month window, and there's other reasons uh, for saying six-month window as well. From the time that the 144,000 gets sealed, like we see in Revelation 7, to the point in later in Revelation 7, after they're sealed, then you see the rapture. You see when all the people are now in heaven, right? So there's there's a point in there, which I or a time frame in there, which I believe is six months. So from the time they get sealed, and they're going to be like Philip. They're going to, you know, when Philip was baptized in the eunuch, the eunuch gets up and Philip's disappeared. And in a verse later, he's in another part of a country, of the country. And I believe that's what's going to happen with these 144,000. They're going to be sealed. They're going to still be spending some time going around. And then at Pentecost is when, look, a great door opened, right? And I think what's going to happen there is this is when the church is going to be raptured. This is when the entire rapture is going to take place, all right? And that's when you're going to see then the 144,000 in Revelation 14 are now standing on Mount Zion with the Lamb. Right, and they're going to take him wheresoever he goes, right? And man, it just it keeps going from there. So now let's go a little bit further. Look at how these final instructions. Watch this greeting, and I beseech you, brethren, or sorry, yeah, this is actually great. This is the second uh, first fruits. Watch this. So you know, so he's saying you know, right? So this is in the final instructions. This is later on before the greetings, which I'm going to touch base on this with you as well. Um, it's telling this group. That you guys know that the, these are the 144,000 that are the first fruits to God. Right? Isn't this interesting? It says that you know. So who knows? The church. But the believers, the saints, the believers during the time of tribulation, they're going to know somehow that these 144,000 towards the end of the tribulation of the church, right? Not the whole time through, they're not going to know it. But towards the end, they're going to come to know. See, 
it says that you know the house of Stephanus, that is the first fruits of Etchia. Right? They're from the same group of Etchia. They're also first fruits. But they're first fruits for who? They're first fruits for the Jews during their time. They've spent some time with the church. They've been sealed and they were doing some preaching and teaching during that time as well. Because see, these are of the first fruits of Etchia and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. So these guys were hot, steaming hot for the Lord, right? These are the 144,000 that were preaching and teaching all over the world, even before they had the seal. And they were preaching and teaching and getting the word out there all over the place during the time of tribulation, right? Getting stronger and stronger in it. And then they're getting sealed later after some of the tribulation, towards the end of the tribulation time. Then they get sealed. But you guys will have known, it says, those who are here during the tribulation, towards the end, you're going to realize that these guys were definitely the ones on fire for Christ. And that they're the ones that are getting sealed. And in fact, towards this end, you know, as it says, this is towards the final greeting when he's talking about it. You're going to know that, yeah, in fact, these guys are the ones. Right? These are the first fruits. Again, first fruits. Not in Romans where we saw first fruits, because those are the first fruits to Christ. Those are the first fruits to Christ that get to be part of the escape. We're now in 1 Corinthians and we see another first groups, another first fruits, and they're not described the same way. This first fruits is of the house of Stephanus, not the same group. All right? But they are still of Achia. Well, where's Achia? Again, it's in through Greece. So they're in this area of Greece, and there were two different first fruits. Well, who is this first fruits? This is the first fruits. These are the 144,000 who are the first fruits to who? For the Jews, for God. These are the 144,000 that get sealed, and they are the first fruits for which harvest? Right? There's one more harvest that has to have a first fruits. It's for the Jews, right? It's all, it's crazy. It's in the last chapter of Romans, the last chapter of Corinthians, and then we're going to touch in the last chapter of 2 Corinthians. It's telling us all of it right there. And now, how do we know that the other first fruits, how do we know that that group is gone when he's talking to this group, right? When he's talking to the church here throughout all of this. How do we know that that first group that said they were first fruits, that it said was first fruits, how do we know that that was really the first groups that's first fruits that's taken away? And now, you know, that they're not a part of the church here. Well, look at this. The churches of Asia salute you. Who are the churches of Asia? The Acacia group, right? Acacia, it breaks down, it's through Asia, that's through that part of Europe. Well, that's where that other first fruits is from. And they're what? They're saluting this entire group, the entire church during tribulation. We salute you, right? We're saluting you. This is the church that's gone. We salute you from where? From heaven, right? We wish you well. We salute you. Be strong. And who are they? It even gives you more detail here. Aquila and Priscilla salute you much in the Lord with the church that is in their house. Where did we just see that? Romans 16. Look at that. Greet Priscilla and Aquila who are with Christ and in Christ. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Salute my well-beloved. Right? This is during the time before the tribulation begins. This is the time we are physically in right now. Salute these people. Understand that there is a group that is the escaped group. That is the well-beloved. They're the only ones called well-beloved. There's others that are beloved. See, beloved, beloved. But there are none called well-beloved except which group? The escaped group. The group that's counted worthy to escape. So this is just like Luke's talking about here in the last chapter of Romans. The group that gets to escape 
those that the Lord found worthy and are his well-beloved that have become his first fruits. And we have the proof, the evidence right here that they're now the ones greeting, saluting you guys or the I should, not necessarily everybody listening, but the church who is left during the time of tribulation. Paul is telling them that this group that has escaped, this is the group saluting you. They're saying, be strong. They salute you much in the Lord. You get it? This is them. And to greet each other with a holy kiss. Right? I believe that holy kiss is you guys greet each other with a hug. Right? With a hug to your brothers and sisters, to fellow brothers and fellow sisters. You know, maybe it's a kiss on the cheek too. I've never been the kiss on the cheek kind of guy, but this is what it's saying. Right? Greet each other. Give each other a hug. And it's telling you that this group is gone. They're now greeting you from afar, from heaven. And then there's going to be this group now that is going to be taken from you. And watch this. I'm going to show you this one here. Watch this in Mark 9. Came across this today. Watch this. This is before uh, the, the transfiguration when they go. And look who goes. <laughs> it's... You know, it's the same characters that I told you about before from Matthew, Mark, and Luke and going into the discourses. Well, now watch what he says. And in Matthew, when you get the story of the transfiguration, you don't have this beforehand. But you do in Mark. And what does it say? Check this out. Jesus says, Verily I say unto you that there be some of them that stand here which shall not taste death until they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. Who's not going to taste death? Which one's among them? Because he's talking to the church. We're in Mark. He's talking to the church. There's some here that aren't going to taste death. Well, why aren't they going to taste death? Because they're the 144,000. They're the ones that are going to be taken and left here on the mount. Where are they? They're on the mount of transfiguration. That's what he's telling them. So there's a group here. There's a group amongst all these people on top of this mountain that, are never, that aren't going to taste death. You see that? They're not going to be killed. They get sealed, right? The 144,000 get sealed. And this group is going to be taken into the time of Jacob's trouble. The ones um, sealed, the 12,000 seals from each of the 12 tribes. And they're going to remain, they're going to see the kingdom of God coming with power. They're going to see heaven come down at the very end of everything. When the thousand years is about to begin, and the kingdom comes down from heaven. That's, what, that's what's being said right here. So there we are. There they are in, in Mark 9, telling you. It, it, it's incredible how all this stuff just ties in together. All of it ties together. I mean, to see and understand this, that it's a collection for the saints. I'm coming to take the saints, and before I take you... There's a group that you're going to approve of, you're going to know and already approve of, who are the 144,000 who are going to go unto Jerusalem. They're going to go to the mountain, and then I'm going to come back. I'm going to spend some time with them for six months, but when, I'm going to, when I come back, I'm going to come back, and I'm going to get you guys. And when I do, I'm going to take you out. There's your rapture. The rapture has come. And then, because you guys know that that group that I'm taking, you already know, that these guys are going to be the first fruits unto what? The grape harvest, right? So that would mean that the other first fruits right here would already have to be gone. These are the first fruits of the wheat harvest, the first group that was taken out. And they're saluting this entire group. They're giving you guys encouragement all to all the church. And now from the church group, from the body of the church, I'm going to take out 144,000 who were found worthy, or sorry, who were found clean, pure, haven't been with women, right? And they're going to follow Christ wherever he goes, right? Follow the Lamb wherever he goes. And we can go into Revelation. Can we confirm this in Revelation, do you think? Right? <laughs> Yes, we can. Let's go into, where was it? Uh, right? 
Can we confirm this? Yeah, look at that. 144,000 on Mount Zion. That's the mount they were talking about. Mount Transfiguration. Same place. And he heard the voice. There's your 144,000 that he hears, but he doesn't see till later. We find out that the 144,000... <clears> listen to this. This is really important. Uh, this is the part where people say, when they sing a new song, it's the 144,000 singing a new song. No, it's not. Not yet. They're the only ones that can learn. See? They're not the ones singing the song. They're the only ones that can learn the song. Right? So he sees the 144,000. Now we know in Revelation 7, they got sealed. Here, we see them on Mount Zion with the Lamb having what? Having, not getting sealed. They now have the Father's uh, seal written in their foreheads. All right? So now they've already been sealed. They're here. And John says, and I heard, because he's looking here, but he also hears this in heaven. Okay? And what does he hear? He hears the voice of many waters, and as it were, the voice of a great thunder. And I heard, right here, I heard the voice of harpers harping their harps. Okay? So what is that? You have somebody's voice. So he hears voice. And then... What are the people whose voices does he hear? He hears the voices of harpers. Harpers are people that harp, right? So he hears the voices of harpers who are on their harps harping, right? So it's, it's, a, it's identifying a group of people that are standing there harping, stringing harps, but he hears their voices. And what does it say after he hears their voices the voices of them, of who? The them are harpers. So he hears the voice of harpers harping their harps. And it says, and they sung as it were a new song. Well, who's singing the new song? The harpers, right? The voice of harpers harping their harps. As they're harping their harps, they're singing a new song. Because who are they? <laughs> this is the raptured church. Their, their voices, they're, they're celebrating, right? They're harping their harps. And what? And they sang a new song, they sang as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the beasts, uh, and before the beasts and the elders. See, and listen now. And no man could learn that song but the 144,000. Well, what do we know? The 144,000 are still men, right? They're redeemed from the earth, from among men. And they're the first fruits, which we just saw in Corinthians, right? They're the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb that are taken from among who? They're redeemed from among men from the earth, which means what? Just like Mark 9 tells us, there will be some that shall not taste death. It is the same group. You get that? I think it's fairly easy to follow this, right? So, they're redeemed from among men, right, from the earth. There, there's a group that Jesus says in Mark 9 that won't taste death. They're not going to see death until everything's all done and the kingdom comes from heaven. All right, to establish on the earth for the Jews, for their thousand year millennium. And it says this song, no man could learn. So including the 144,000 and all the men left on the earth, which is Jews and all the unbelievers that will never come to believe. Out of all of those people that are left on the earth, including the 144,000 who have never tasted death yet are protected. They're the only ones that could sing that song. See that? So... They're, it's not saying that they sang the song. They're not the ones singing the song yet. They're the only ones that could learn the song that is being sung by the harpers. All right? So, and these are the ones, the 144,000, which were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. It goes back to exactly what we were talking about. Here's the first fruits from the house of Stephanos. And apparently the church during this time towards the end is going to know that these guys are the ones, that they're the house of Stephanos, 
that they're the first fruits that are going to be sealed, right? And then here we have the salutation from the first group that already escaped. Isn't that crazy? That is so awesome. It's a confirmation, guys, that there is an escape. It is not a rapture that comes first. And it is so, so important because people are going to be so, man, they're going to be so frazzled and confused when these people drop dead. And I believe we're talking early, early November here. And as watchmen, we're just to point out, am I right? I pray that I'm right. Whether I'm included and me and my family are included worthy, let's just get this thing on with. And if we have to go through it, if we're part of the ones that need to be beheaded, you know, I pray for the strength during that time as well. But I would rather pray always and watch and be accounted worthy. And as somebody who watches, I'm supposed to point out to you guys to give you guys what the signs are showing uh, and understanding to the best of our comprehension at that time, as well as what the word tells us to look for and to acknowledge and to pay attention to. All right. So I am praying that this is the time. And we know that God isn't delaying anything. It's on a clock. And we saw the sign September 23rd. We know it says 40 days from the sign. We know that Leviticus 12, like a previous video, we know that Leviticus 12 says when the woman gives birth and there you go, the virgin, that was a sign on the 23rd. And, you know, it still all equals the same thing. Seven days unclean, 33 more days, 40 days, bang, November 2nd. Guys, it's pointing there. I don't know what else to tell you. <clears throat> but what I can tell you is that there is absolutely an escape that comes first, not a rapture. And without this understanding out there, people are going to be so disillusioned because they will not have understood that it wasn't a rapture. And like I said in the beginning, they're going to be wondering with their pastors, with other believers, what the heck happened. It couldn't have been the rapture because they didn't disappear. Even if I wasn't included, or the people saying that, even if I wasn't included in the, the rapture, that was supposed to happen first, and it's going to happen to me later, three and a half years later, they believe, because they don't understand it's seven and seven. You know, why didn't they disappear? It's because they don't. The first group is an escape in the spirit. Bodies will drop dead. About seven years later, the rapture will take place. All right? Here's another thing. I, I'm, I might touch this on another video too, but just think of uh, Elizabeth and Mary, right? Mary's cousin. What happened to, right, with Zachariah and Elizabeth? They were up there in age and they were visited by the angel and the angel said they're going to conceive and that his name's going to be John, right? And then goes and visits Mary. The angel visits Mary, says John is six months older, <clears throat> right? Sorry, that's not the story I want to go into, but that actually does tie into some of this, but I'm not going to touch on that now. Um, think of, um, of um, who was it? Was it, uh, come on, what's his name? Joseph, was it? <clears throat> and he did all the work. He wanted Rachel, and he worked for seven years to get Rachel, but he never got Rachel. He got Leah. Do you get it? It's not the one he wanted, even Jesus. <laughs> the Gentiles and us isn't the one he wanted, right? But he had to, there's going to be seven years, and then he gets the Gentile grafted in church, and then what? And then he worked another seven years to get Rachel. Hello? Hello? Knock, knock. Right? The evidence is all throughout Scripture. It's going to be 14 years, and there are going to be billions unprepared, right? And billions for sure when you think of just 144 million that are going to suddenly drop dead and you think of it's still going to be over 7 billion people left. Are you kidding? That's a lot of unprepared people. You know, so, you know, when people talk about preparing and, you know, getting food and water and, you know, doing that stuff, if you don't think you're going to be part, and even if you do think that you're going to be accounted worthy to escape all these things, I still say prepare, right? If you don't have a lot of money, just do what you can because there's not a lot of time left anyways. But do what you can. And if the, the thing is, it's, I don't prepare 
and have this stuff necessarily thinking that I'm going to be here, that I'm not going to be, me and my family aren't going to be part of the escape. I, like I said in a previous video, went out and bought even more stuff because, and I got it, I got them stacked with Bibles in there hidden and some of my USB sticks hidden in there because for others, you know, if me and my family do get to escape and we're found worthy, this is going to be for others. And I buy more to prepare for, to help others. And if it just so happens, maybe it's not the time and it's a natural disaster that comes around the area where I live, our family is going to be okay for, a lot, for quite a while, right? For a few months, we can go without quite a bit because we're prepared, right? It didn't cost a lot of money at all, at all, at all, at all. You can be well prepared for a few hundred dollars to a thousand, at least with certain foods to, and water to prepare, maybe a thousand bucks, let's say, <clears throat> right? But... You know, it, it is important to prepare, and there's not a lot of time left. Okay, so now let's go in to finish this. Isn't that cool? It's it's all right here. Now let's go into 2 Corinthians 13, who we know, like I said before, is talking to the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. Watch this. See, this is the third time I am come. <laughs> what? The third time? I told you. It's the third time. Right? Romans was the first time he took the escape group. And he brought what? Burden. That's the group escapes. Burden comes. War and then famines and then um, and pestilence and then earthquakes and then meteor showers. And then really starts to get crazy. And that meteor shower, it's not just a little meteor shower. I've said this before. This is people are going to be hiding from this stuff because it's going to be devastating. Right? So he, that was all... When he first came, the second time he came, it was after a lot of that stuff, and he took the church. He took her children, right? And then what about the third time? Well, now he's here the third time, right? And the third time what? In the mouth of two or three witnesses? Hello? The witnesses show up, right? And he says, shall the thing shall be established. Now, I told you before, and I foretell you, right? So he says, I told you before, and I'm foretelling you. This is the confusing part I was telling you, but you got to pay attention. I foretold you. I told you before, and I'm foretelling you as if I were present the second time. So he's talking as if he's foretelling, because this is in the future. I mean, you got to remember, he's talking this 2,000 years ago. He's telling them, like I told you before, 2,000 years ago, I'm foretelling you as if I'm here the second time, which is what? The second time. When he sealed the 144,000 and then removed the church. So he's telling them this as if he's here the second time. Right? And being absent, I now write to tell you. That's why he's written these letters. This is the deeper end time understanding of these letters and the importance of understanding who they are speaking to and who Paul is writing to in relation to the end times. I've proven it to you guys in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And now I've just proven it to you in just in the last chapters of First and Second Corinthians. I've proven it to you in other uh, videos regarding First Thessalonians and Second Thessalonians which is why people get so confused and they say, well, it says that, you know, at the twinkling of an eye, you know, at the last trump, guys, you're right. These teachers were correct. What they misunderstood or what wasn't revealed until the Lord's been, the Spirit's been revealing it to me is that there's a portion before it and that everything you guys had understood is the last seven years, the last, the beginning before the last seven years into the last seven years of Jacob's trouble. You've completely missed, misunderstood or didn't hear or it wasn't the time of the understanding of everything that comes before it for the church. All right. Now watch this. So I'm speaking to you as if it'd be a second time and being absent now, which is why he's writing the letters. Now I write to them uh, heretofore, though, for those who have sinned, and to all that 
if I come again, see, that's why he's saying I'm writing to you as if I was here the second time when I raptured the church, when I sealed the 144,000 and then I raptured the church out. I'm writing to you and talking to you as if I'm here at that time to tell you that if I come again, well, we know he's coming again, right? That if I come again a third time, right? We know he's coming the third time. That if you're still sinning, that you or others are still sinning, when I come the third time, you're finished. You're done. I will not spare you. You're finished. There will be no acceptable time of sin during those latter, latter days. Remember, we're in 2 Corinthians now. This is to our Jewish brothers and sisters or to be brothers and sisters who don't get this yet. If they're sinning during this time and they haven't corrected their ways, come to accept Jesus Christ and accept their ways when Christ returns a third time and he's returning with who? With all of his angels, right? They're coming back. This is when it's done, when he comes to judge all of them and the final battle takes place. If you're found sinning still at that time, you are done. You're finished. All right, that's what it's telling us here. And you could read through more of this. I'm hitting on the points of it, right? Therefore, I write these things being absent, right? He's writing it and he's pre-writing it to let you guys know, right? According to the power which the Lord hath given unto me to edification and not to destruction because he wants to build you guys up, right? He's not doing this to destroy you guys. He's giving... Thousand, two thousand years of warning before it's going to happen. All right. And now look at this. Check this out. Again, the final greeting and what? The holy kiss. And who's doing the saluting this time? Who's saying, guys, come on, you got this. We're, we're cheering for you. We're with you. We're saluting you. Who's doing it? All the saints. How is it that all the saints are now saluting? Because all the saints are now in heaven. You get it? The church time is over. All the saints have been raptured. In Romans, who was greeting the Corinthians, right? Who was greeting the Corinthians? They were the group that escaped in Romans before the tribulation of the church began, right? And we find that in the greeting that says, these are the groups, this is the group that's saluting you guys. Now we're in Corinthians, and who's giving them the salutation saying, guys, this, come on, you could do it. Well, this time it's everybody. It's all of this group from Romans, who were saints as well, and all the saints complete, all the saints, because the church has been removed. They're now encouraging the Corinthians. You see that? More evidence for you guys. To tell you, I'm see my goosebumps just keep coming. It's crazy. It's it's evidenced in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. It was in First Corinthians, Second Corinthians. It was. It, it's everywhere. Watch my videos. It's it, it. I give you the evidence all over the place. Right. Even in Second Corinthians twelve. Watch this. Right. I talked about this earlier. Like one being raptured. The escaped group was raptured. The group that did get raptured, all of the church. And then what? I'm here a third time. And this time I'm not coming to bring you burden. I'm not coming for your children. I'm here for you. Right? But for you. It's the third time. And I just revealed it to you in the last book, last chapter of Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians. Is that not evidence enough for you? Who is being spoken to? You need to understand when studying these books. Or maybe you don't, to be honest with you. Maybe you don't need to understand it if you're part of the escape group. But I think that there's a bunch of people listening to this that aren't maybe going to be part of the escape group. And it's going to be needed. You're going to remember this stuff. And it's going to be needed during the tribulation of the church. And then for the, the tribulation during Jacob's trouble for the Jews. 
It is absolutely going to be need need to be understood so they can know what to expect. They can know what's coming. They can know how to live and how they should carry themselves, what they should be learning. I mean, it's everything is detailed in them. That's why I'm telling you it's important and it's going to be important. Okay? So with that, guys... I, I just thought this one was so, so incredible. I mean, it leads into Revelation, and it goes into Revelation. Uh, it Actually, it would even touch in uh, the churches, and it touches in 7, and it tells us in 14, Revelation 14. We now know that the 144,000, from Mark 9 even, that there's a group, which are the 144,000, that aren't going to see death. Right? They're not going to see death. They're going to be raptured, to Mount Zion where the Lamb's going to be after they've been sealed with the seal of God. And the church is going to actually come to realize who this group is. Isn't that crazy? And we've got the pre-tribulation escape. Uh, I mean, geez, guys, it's all here just in these three books. It's unbelievable. Not, not even three books, three chapters in three books. I just found it so incredible. I hope it's, uh, it's you guys see it. I hope it's being revealed to you. I would ask that you please share it. Show your pastors. Show your family and friends that, that, that have their understanding of the Bible. Understand that when you do, we're not saying that they're wrong in what they've been teaching all these years. This is another understanding, a deeper understanding of how it's going to apply and how it's all prophetic, speaking to the end days. That is what the Spirit has revealed to me. That is who it's for. And when we reveal it to these people, there are going to be many of them who weren't included in the escape. I'm positive of that. And this is going to be something that's going to remind them. They're going to say, oh my goodness. And they will come to it. I'm positive that's why the Lord is using me for this. That it's going to make some people remember and realize it. And then there's going to be studying and bang, that's where they're going to get their evidence from. I think I spoke about it in another video. I was telling my wife the same thing. <clears throat> you know, if this evidence, if the Lord just revealed it to pastors and believers during the time of tribulation and tried to say to their congregation that was still here during the tribulation of the church and say, oh, um, you know, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it wasn't the rapture. It was an escape. The rapture is coming in seven years. You know, it's coming later. What do you think that the churchgoers are going to think? The saints are going to be like, oh my goodness, are you crazy? I've been following you this whole time. You told me it was going to be a rapture. We're all going. Now you're telling me it was an escape? Why am I supposed to believe you? Why should I believe you, pastor? Why should I believe you, teacher, when you've been saying this whole time that there's going to be a rapture and now there's these millions of people all around the world who dropped dead? You're going to try and tell me that that was like a rapture and they were supposed to be part of it that, and that's what it was? And that's what they were a part of, and that we completely missed this rapture-like thing. Do you understand? This is why I say, look at this important. I told you before, I'm foretelling you now, so that when it happens, when it comes to pass, you will know that I, I told you before. And I believe that's what the Spirit's using me for. What if a, what if a pastor and teachers have this information and can now point to my video or to my USB sticks, whatever the case may be, at a later date and say, guys, I'm sorry, I thought the rapture was first. It's what we understood. But here's evidence. Here's somebody who was revealed in the Spirit to tell us this is what happened. This is what we missed. And he told us before it happened so that when it happened, we would know that it was true that here was what happened and here's what we missed. So that now we better get on track and get the understanding that's needed during this time. You see that? I just think it's so unbelievable. You know, it. it I don't cry up and tear up every time, but I'll tell you, in, in the, you know, these last, oh, not even two months, month and a half, there's been a lot of crying, a lot of tearing up, a lot of like, what the heck moments? I can't believe this is crazy. Um, but it's happening guys. I've, I've been from even, uh, subscribers, you know, a really good friend now and, and a sister, a fellow sister subscriber. I mean, it is getting confirmed all around me. This is the truth. 
Now, please share this, guys. So with that, I won't keep you any longer. I knew this was going to be a little bit of a longer video, but it was worth it. The, the nuggets that are hidden, the truths that are hidden in there are just unbelievable. So with that, guys, I love you. I pray this reaches your heart, your minds. I pray that you would go to the scriptures that I've shown you in this video and dig into them for yourself to get this understanding so that you could show others and talk to others about it, right? The time is so, so short, so short. Now is the time to get this out there as fast as we can. Share it with as many. All right, guys, I love you. I pray that you're found worthy, that we're all found worthy to escape watching and found worthy and praying to escape all these things that are coming upon the whole earth. All right, guys, God bless you, you and your families, and have a great rest of the week.